So, so my name is Ali Murtaza, and I'm part of the international business development team at uh, Export Development Canada. I cover the Middle East and North Africa region and the Eastern Mediterranean region from a business perspective region. So, uh, perspective, uh, business development perspective. Finally, got it right. Uh, so in today's presentation, I'm not going to take too much of your time. I'll just give you a brief overview of uh, what EDC is, how we help Canadian companies in exploring new markets, and EDC's experience of the Eastern Mediterranean region. So please stop me if you have any questions in the middle. I'll, I'll be more than happy to take those questions. So just to give you a sense of who EDC is, well, very simply, we are Canada's export credit agency. Uh, we are a crown corporation wholly owned by the government of Canada. Uh, we're AAA rated. However, I think it's very important to highlight that EDC is a self-sustaining organization, as in, you know, we raise our own capital. We have our own treasury desk that goes out and raises capital from the global capital markets. So we receive no financing or grants from the government. Uh, therefore, anything that we do has to be commercially viable from, from a business and a credit perspective. Uh, what, is, what is EDC's mandate? Well, our mandate is fairly clear. We are there to help and support Canadian exporters in their uh, export capabilities across the world. How we do that is by providing financing and ins insurance solutions. Another very important part of our role is to provide market intelligence to Canadian companies, especially when they're looking to explore new markets. So, you know, we'll get into more details later, but we have international offices with people on the ground. So similar to global affairs, we have people actually in the market, which are, you know, uh, a very good source of market intel for Canadian companies. Just to give you a sense of our business, in 2015, we did almost close to $100 billion uh, of $100 billion of business for Canadians, you know, in support of Canadian companies. Uh, almost $30 billion of this was in emerging markets, which is a number that EDC is very proud of because at times, you know, these emerging markets are the markets where Canadian financial institutions at times shy away. Uh, from going. So, you know, so we're very proud of the fact that we're able to support Canadian companies there. Uh, we, in 2015, we supported about 7,300 Canadian companies in their business efforts, 80% of which were small and medium sized enterprises. Again, this is a number that we are very proud of as an organization because obviously, you know, we provide support to the large names such as Bombardier's and the SNCs, but our real value add, I guess, is for the smaller, com smaller Canadian companies. Uh, you know, because at times they are the ones who have difficulties in, in exploring new markets. So, so yeah, so our mandate is to support SMEs. This slide just gives you a sense of our presence across Canada. We have numerous, uh, numerous offices across the country. I'm not going to spend too much time here, but on the other one, so this is a slide that I would like to spend some time on. So this is our international representations across the globe. Uh, we have close to 18 international offices. This chart is actually not updated. We recently opened an office in, jo in Johannesburg, South Africa. And so, you know, we have our international reps, uh, you know, located in these offices, and, and, and that allows them to not only build fairly strong relationships with uh, either existing or potential buyers of Canadian goods, but also you know, a very good source of direct market intelligence for Canadian companies. So the Eastern Mediterranean region, uh, which includes Turkey, is covered out of our office in Istanbul. We have two colleagues over there, and the rest of the team is in Ottawa. Just to give you a sense of our products and services, in a nutshell, uh, you know, our services would fall into two main buckets, which are financing solutions and insurance solutions. So what kind of financing solutions do we offer? So we can provide financing to Canadian exporters uh, within Canada. So if you, know, if you have an export, you know, if, you, if your company is primarily an exporter, you're looking to further expand your facilities here, that's something that EDC can help you with. We try not to displace the commercial bank market, but we try to be, you know, an institution that adds liquidity along with the commercial bank. So our role is not to, you know, take business away from, from the commercial banks, but to assist and facilitate them. We also have the ability to provide financing to buyers of Canadian goods in international markets. So this is actually a very interesting concept in which 
you know, the Canadian company would go to a new buyer and say, look, these are our technical specifications of our product. By the way, Mr. Buyer, if you need funding to buy my product, that's where EDC can come in. So the idea is we, you know, the Canadian company gives a complete package to the buyer, and that helps in closing transactions and contracts. We can also provide financing to Canadian companies investing abroad. Uh, again, if you are thinking of setting up a business in a, in a foreign market, uh, we can help you with that. Uh, it is, you know, if you already have a subsidiary and you're thinking of expanding that, again, we can provide financing, financing for the, those kind of transactions. And lastly, and I guess in, in, in some limited uh, circumstances, we're also able to provide financing to investors coming into Canada. Uh, the caveat being that these investors have to invest in a company or an industry which is largely export focused. Just to give you a sense of the insurance products we have, these are largely from a risk mitigation perspective. So for example, accounts receivable insurance, that helps Canadian exporters you know, carry out their business without having to worry about whether they will get paid for their contract or not, because that's where EDC comes in and provides uh, you know, insurance for, for your contract. Can you hear me on top of the noise or? OK, good. Uh, similarly, we have other insurance products, you know, which are geared towards uh, exporters and trying to help them export more. What are the key criteria for EDC support? Like I mentioned earlier, because we operate largely as a commercial enterprise, you know, credit risk is obviously very important for us. Uh, we, you know, we are fairly flexible, but at the end of the day, we try and support projects or transactions that are that are viable and from a credit perspective. The other criteria that we focus on very strongly is our corporate social responsibility. So any project or transaction that we participate in has, you know, we have to make sure that the CSR principles are being met. And I think lastly and most importantly, anything that we do has to be at the back of a Canadian exporter or, you know, existing contract or the potential of a Canadian company getting a contract. So just to give you a sense of our Eastern Mediterranean business and, and practice, so we've been present uh, physically in the region since 2010, so we have an office in Istanbul. Uh, the region covers about 16 countries, so all the way starting from Bulgaria and Romania and the north, going down to Greece, Syria, Turkey, and then on the east we have, uh, in this region we also cover uh, Georgia and Azerbaijan. As you would expect, out of these 16 countries, Turkey by far is the largest market. About 75% of whatever we do in the region is you know, essentially in Turkey, both from a financing and an insurance perspective. Uh, the business strategy for the region is focused on five key sectors. So that's extractive, oil and gas, metals and mining. Healthcare is a sector that we've started seeing a lot of opportunity and, and focus from Canadian companies. Infrastructure, power, uh, and information communication technology. You know, these are basically satellites and telecoms. Again, areas where Canadian companies have a lot of capabilities. And lastly, transportation. You know, rail, aviation. Most of these economies are spending heavily on infrastructure. So there's you know various opportunities for Canadian companies to play there. This next slide just gives you a sense of, of the business that we do. So as, as you would note, over the last five, six years, we're doing about two to two and a half billion dollars of business in the region across both financing and insurance solutions. So this is just a case study of one of the recent transactions that we did in Turkey in 2014. So we participated in the project financing of Star Refinery. This was the largest project finance transaction in Turkey at the time. Uh, about $5.6 billion total project. It's a refinery, and this was, you know, once the project is complete in 2018, this will help Turkey, you know, large, you know be much more self-sufficient as far as, uh, you know, uh, crude and, and refined product is concerned. The reason why I just wanted to highlight this transaction was that this transaction was based on some contracts at the at the star refinery but more more so this was in anticipation of additional uh canadian contracts in future so the idea is we 
we, you know, we establish a relationship with, with the sponsors of this project, which is SOCAR, uh, you know, the national oil company for Azerbaijan. And then we try and leverage that relationship to introduce Canadian companies to SOCAR and plug the Canadian companies into the supply chain. So again, forward-looking uh, perspective, and the whole idea is to try and increase more trade from Canada to both Turkey, Azerbaijan, and anywhere where SOCAR has their businesses or assets. Over the next few slides, I'll just get into you know, brief details on some of the sectors where we see most of the opportunities in the region. Uh, so the first one would be extractive. Uh, if you look at Turkey first, while Turkey may not have a lot of hydrocarbon resources, Turkey does definitely have an abundant supply of both uh, base and precious metals, so for example, coal, gold. Uh, so the mining sector in Turkey is expected to grow from 14 billion in 2013 to about close to 19 billion in 2018. So again, a lot of growth in the sector, a lot of opportunities for Canadian companies, and as you will, you may be aware, there are a few Canadian companies already present in Turkey in the mining sector. For example, you know, Alamas, Gold, Sentera. These these are Canadian companies that are already there. So if you are you know, a company that plays in the mining space, we can, you know, you can reach out to us or, or you can reach out to the Canadian companies that are already there because that's easier to fit into their supply chain. Some of the other markets which have opportunities in the mining space would be Serbia. Again, sizable coal and copper and gold reserves. Uh, Serbia actually is estimated right now to only be ex exploiting about 10% of their mineral deposits. So, you know, a lot of opportunities again. The government over there is very focused on attracting uh, foreign direct investment to the country. They've come out with a new mining law in 2015, and that again is a fairly investor friendly, uh, you know, uh, law. So, again, the idea is that there are opportunities there that Canadian companies can explore. Uh, similarly, Bulgaria, Romania, you know, again, uh, countries with, with mining assets and both, both are countries where governments are encouraging investors to come in. Again, you know, there are Canadian companies already present there. So moving on to, I guess, the next sector, healthcare. As far as healthcare is concerned, Turkey really is the key market uh, as far as what we see from an opportunity perspective. Healthcare in Turkey, unfortunately, is still, uh, you know, fairly low as a percentage of GDP when you looked at other developed European countries. Uh, so, you know, therefore, the government is investing heavily into the sector. The government has announced about 20 PPP projects, uh, private-public partnership projects in the healthcare space. You know, total project uh, cost of these projects is about 10 billion euros. So, you know, not a small uh, step from the government uh, by any means. Uh, a new PPP law was passed in 2013. So again, we're starting to see interest from Canadian companies. We are, as EDC, we're actually involved in two transactions right now. Uh, they're still live, so I won't be able to, you know, divulge a lot of details here. But again, you know, we are looking at healthcare opportunities. And where can the Canadian companies fit into the supply chain? Well, there are numerous opportunities. There's construction, engineering, equipment supply. So, and Canada, as you know, is is you know has fairly strong capabilities as far as the healthcare uh, sector is concerned. The last sector that I would touch upon here is power. So again, across the region, as as these economies are developing and growing, obviously there would be you know increased need for power. So Turkey, again, by far, you know, stands out uh, amongst the countries. Uh, you know, the demand for power in Turkey has pretty much doubled over the last 10 years. The government is focusing on privatizing, privatizing the sector. So, you know, 20 plus electricity distribution networks have already been privatized. Uh, the government is also focusing on renewables, for example, solar, you know, hydro. So again, these are areas where Canadian companies can, can, can play in. Other regional markets with opportunities are, for example, Serbia, focusing on wind energy. You know, uh, the installed capacity in Serbia is expected to grow from 20 megawatts in 2014 to almost 550 megawatts in 2025. So again, you know, there are opportunities for Canadian companies. Georgia would be the last country that I would mention from a power perspective. Again, this is a country with a lot of hydro potential. 
Uh, again, you know, area where Canadian companies can play in. Georgia overall is a very, very investor-friendly market. It's not a big market, but again, the government is really focusing a lot on bringing, you know, uh, investment into the country. So, from a regulatory perspective, fairly easy for Canadian companies to go to start a business there. I, this is just a snapshot of some of the transactions that we've done in the region over, over the last several years. I won't get into details on it, but I just wanted to point out that if you look at the top, le well, top left corner, you know, some of the transactions that we do, that we do are in the $150, $200 million range, so big transactions, but you, know, but you will also notice that we do you know, transactions in the $5 to $10 million range, or even smaller. So the idea is we are there to help Canadian companies, irrespective of their size. Uh, there's no minimum transaction size we do, as long as the mandate is strong, as long as we help, we're helping the Canadian company. Uh, you know, we're willing to look at that transaction and try and do our best to resolve or solve it. That's about it. Uh, this is just, you know, the team. We have two people, as I mentioned, in Istanbul and two people in Ottawa. My colleague Shannon Fisher is actually in the room as well, right over there in the far left. So, you know, please feel free to reach out to us. We'll be here for some time. And I guess if there are any questions, we would be more than happy to take them now. Thank you.